sure I can go over here. Yeah. <laughs> As, as you listen to our song this morning, uh, please harken back to our reading from last week on the Beatitudes. And there are also some allusions to light and darkness in the song. Thank you. 
truth. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We are so happy to have all of you here today. Uh, we say a special welcome to any and all who are guests today. Yet we are so glad you're here. One of them is uh, the person who's going to lead your worship service next Sunday because I'll be recovering from a knee replacement. And uh, it's uh, a fellow sitting there in the very back. Rabbi Jim, Rabbi Jim, would you stand up, please? He's tall. <laughs> <He's so. laughs> all right. Thank you. Welcome, Rabbi Jim. All right. Thank you. Bible says, lay hands on no man suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi Jim. We're very, very good friends from our time in Australia. Rabbi Jim's congregation is uh, in, in Hebrew, Hesed Bey Shalom, which means grace and peace. So that's the name of this congregation. And he will be leading worship next Sunday. His congregation meets on the Sabbath Saturday, so he is able to be here next Sunday. And hopefully... I'll be able to have my knee replacement and be in recovery. So thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, just a couple other things. We do have the study on Monday on Revelation. So you're certainly invited to come and be a part of that study. I'll be talking a little bit about Revelation today in the message. Also, um, it's, uh, it's still the season of Epiphany. And so we are very blessed and very thankful for the uh, shining God's light, our mission in love and service, and we'll be talking about that later as well in the service. So we're going to be visiting uh, today's Nora and I. We're going to go visit our shut-ins today and tomorrow and get acquainted with them, bring them communion and, uh, and the Word of God. Finally, the theme for our worship today is crisis. I think all of us have experienced crisis. So I'd like to be thinking about a crisis that impact your life. It might be personal, it may be family, it may be uh, uh, the crisis of uh, COVID, things like that. I'd like you to be thinking about how you experienced whatever crisis really impacted your life and how God led you through it. That's what we're going to be talking about in the message today. So uh, the theme of crisis and God getting us through that. We continue now with the order for confession and forgiveness, which is on page 94 at the front of our handle, page 94, 94. And you may remain seated for the confession. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now then confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, and therefore declare unto us the entire forgiveness of all our sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to need your help. Anybody know the number of our opening hymn? Yes. Six, six, five. Oh, it's on the post. Six, six, five. There you go. Thank you. I'm worrying all the time. Stand as you are able. Six, six, five. Rise. Rise for opening hymn. Rise, shine, you people.
We share now the prayer of the day, and I invite all of us to share this prayer together as one. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's word. And what? Right. All right. Work on that. It's all right. All right. Many names to learn. Yeah. Thank you. First day of school for me and all my kids, new kids. But yes. All right. We have kind of a long one this morning from Isaiah's 58th chapter, verses 1 through 9a, and then 9b through 12. So hold on. Here we go. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if we were a they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me righteous, righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests in, on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Hmm. Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free? and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Our vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and you shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness. And your gloom will be like the needle. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like the water garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up in the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets <coughs> to your body. Word of God from Isaiah. Thank you, God. Now you notice a little different today, much easier to follow <laughs> in your insert. Um, the responsive reading, and it comes from Psalm 112, which is 1 through 9 and 10. So I will start and you read the doctrine, please. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. Their generation of the right will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast. 
trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established in the Lord. They will hold up their heads with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and find a way. The desires of the wicked will perish. Word of God. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hear now the words of Jesus for today's message from the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount covers Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And it's a vital instruction for the well-being of individuals as well as the community. I share now. Matthew 5, verse 13 through 20. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. And now we continue with a um, flute solo. So, oh yes, right over it. Becca, yes, Becca, we'll share our flute solo. Thank you.
Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I invited us earlier to think about those moments where we have been in a crisis, things that have been a crisis for us, maybe personally or in our family, uh, maybe a crisis with a neighbor, or, or even broader in our uh, community and in our world. And anybody here this morning be willing to share uh, their perspective on a crisis? Anybody uh, bold enough to share uh, any experience? Over here, Janet.
can lead to a crisis. And Revelation addresses the fact that people are living in a crisis, and the greatest crisis for them is the influence of the Roman Empire. Certainly their practices, their ways did not reflect a loving, caring, nurturing God. Certainly their ways cause great stress. And what Revelation says to those who are hanging on to their relationship with God is, this is a crisis. We're going through a hard time, but hang on to your faith. Hang on to your relationship with Jesus Christ. And as Janet said, you will get through this. Now I want to confess that when it comes to crisis, I've learned late in life that... Uh, God does not always keep you from having them. Sometimes I pray, Lord, keep me from this crisis, or, or Lord, get me out of this crisis. But I've come to learn, as Janet pointed out, maybe what God is saying is, you're going to have a crisis, but I will be with you through that crisis. You won't be alone. You won't be overwhelmed. And I will be here to get you through those fears and anxieties and worries that your crisis has created for you. And that's why Jesus talks about the people in our lives, the people in our community, who help get us through our crisis. The first ones he mentioned are the salt of the earth. I love that phrase. You know, you talk about someone who will give you their shirt off their back. They'll drop anything and everything. If you have a need, if you have a situation where you need some help, the people who are the salt of the earth are those people who will step up and step up to help you out. Uh, that's a, a, a he's, he's speaking to people in his congregation. He's saying, you are the salt of the earth. He's saying, you, there are those among you who are excited and happy to help people out. You want to do that. I think I mentioned a while back, we moved from Iowa to back here to Vancouver, Washington, early September. Well, one of the things that we could not move was the box spring mattress, which was in the basement of the parsonage where I lived. They could not get that up through the stairwell. It was too small. Well, when I got here, uh, my wife said, you've got to get a box spring mattress. And I went and priced them out, and to buy a new one and have it delivered was 300 bucks. And I was too cheap to pay that. <laughs> I wanted to get a used one. I wanted to get one that uh, someone would either sell really reasonable or give it away. Well, I happened to speak to one of the local pastors in Vancouver, and she says, oh, it's interesting you should say that, because I need some help moving some of my furniture, and I have a box spring mattress to give away. Well, I thought this is a win-win for both of us. We can help each other out. But I needed transportation. And she lived about 20 miles out of town. But when we first came back, I started attending a neighborhood church, the Methodist church, and they helped me on the day that I moved in, and you know, I'd never even met them before. Well, I don't know very many people in Vancouver, especially those who would have a truck and could help me out. So I thought, what the heck, I'll try them again. So I reached out to this particular congregation, and and one fellow who actually has a shattered shoulder and an elbow but can drive his pickup truck, he says, I can furnish the truck, but you're going to need some help. So I called a young mother, and uh, she said, we'll help out. And she had a, uh, about a 6'2 son, and they, they did all the heavy lifting. And yesterday, I finally, after five months, got that queen size <laughs> box spring mattress into my house. Because... There are people who are the salt of the earth. And maybe you are those people. I, I mentioned last week about uh, Rabbi Jim being the salt of the earth for me on many occasions. And uh, uh, how his church, at times when I was struggling, when I felt crisis, his congregation ministered to me. And uh, I would have the blessing and opportunity to speak at his church, and he would speak at our church, and I would have fellowship with them. They would break bread with me together, and they really got me through some, some difficult times. And, and I'm very thankful for that. I, I know Pastor Matt March at the uh, text study, uh, he always had a great insight and understanding of the scriptures, and uh, oftentimes people would look to him 
Or uh, what does this passage mean? What, the, what, the, what is Jesus talking about here? And he would bring that insight and that illumination, which leads to the second thing that we are called the light of the world. You ever thought about being a light to someone else? Usually crisis is associated with a time of, of darkness and discouragement and despair. But someone comes along who is the light of the world to bring hope and illumination into your situation. And the light that they bring to you helps you through your crisis. When we have a baptism, one of the things we say right after the person is baptized is, uh, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine the others that they may see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And I was so thankful when I learned what your mission statement is. Shining God's light in love and service. That's what we are called to do. We receive many blessings from God, but we are also called to do things for God. And doing those things are being the salt of the earth, being the light of the world. When I asked Mike if he would be willing to, Mike uh, Whittlinger, be willing to uh, videotape our service and put it on Facebook, he's here even when I'm not. And maybe that's why the Kansas City Chiefs won. I don't know, but anyways, <laughs> he's a big Kansas City Chief fan. <laughs> there are times when we are called to be the salt of the earth for someone else. And there are times when we are called to be the light of the world for others. And there are times when we need the salt and we need the light to get us through our crisis, to get us through our discouragement. And that happens when we have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Janet was so right on. And that, that relationship with Jesus Christ is vital. Nurturing that relationship Letting him be our salt, letting him be our light, equips us, enables us, encourages us, and energizes us to be the salt and light that our world needs. Certainly, I would love to have a time when I'm not going to have any more crisis in my life. Maybe you think about that, too. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We will have that. But we won't have them without the salt and the light. That helps us get through them all. Amen. <laughs> and now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. 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 We continue our service now with the um, Apostles' Creed. And so I invite us to stand as you were able. Uh, it's at the back of the hymnal, but I encourage people to. Try and say the Apostles' Creed by memory. I think it's good to know that uh, in our heart and our soul and our mind. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe that Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. And he shall come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we have the prayers of the church. And as I mentioned every week, if you have a prayer that you would like to offer either silently or out loud, we invite you to do that, followed by Lord in your mercy. So we, we continue now with the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the great honor and privilege of knowing your law, of being given teachings that, as we abide by them, bring blessing and purpose and fulfillment to our life. And Lord, we also thank you for your patience and your forgiveness when we stray from that law. But we thank you, Lord, that your Son, Jesus Christ, fulfilled that law and enables us by his grace and mercy to help get us through our crisis, to help get us through all experiences, and empowers us 
to help others get through their crisis. Lord, in your mercy. Here, up here. Lord, we lift up our elected leaders, both uh, locally, statewide, and nationally. What an important job. And we pray, Lord, that they would have a relationship with you, to seek to do what is best for all, that they would be discouraged from seeking personal gain, but instead devote their lives to being that light shining in love and service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we lift up in prayer healing uh, for those in need of healing, comfort, and strength. We lift up Marge, Beverly, Karen, June, Robert, Edie, Francis, Carol, Brad, Frida O'Hara, and Larry Nelson for health concerns. We also lift up Walt Wagerman, who's having cataract surgery tomorrow and next Monday. Lord, we pray your healing for them, and we pray your comfort and peace for the Jordan family with the passing of Emily's brother, Simon. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the leadership of this congregation. We thank you, Lord, for your plans for a, a future part-time pastor or full-time or whatever it's going to be, Lord. And Lord, I thank you so much for the great joy and privilege of serving this congregation and the incredible blessing that it brings to me and my wife. Lord, in your mercy. And now the people of God share their prayers at this time. Dear Lord, thank you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for parts of the country that do not have weather as nice as we have. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of being able to live here in southwestern Washington. But we pray, Lord, for places that it's experience extreme cold, and snow, ice, uh, things that can be a crisis. And we pray, Lord, that they will experience your presence and encouragement to get them through that experience. And now, Lord, we thank you for the gift of coming, of your coming to us in bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and how that gives us the sustenance, the nurturance, the nourishment for our spiritual journey. In your name we pray. Amen. And I invite us to greet one another with the peace of the Lord. If you want to do a wave or a, a finger bump or whatever you want to do, an elbow bump, whatever you want to do. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. You're fine. Oh, you're staying. And I'm not going to forget the offer. Okay. <laughs> That would be a crisis. <laughs> Now with the great thanksgiving and prepare our minds and hearts for the gift of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord took the cup. When he had supped, when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, for this cup is the new covenant given and shed for you in my blood for the forgiveness of all sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And may we pray together the prayer our Lord promised to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come and receive Christ's body and blood. And all are well.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may it strengthen and preserve all of us unto life everlasting. Amen. We share the printed bold print for the table blessing and prayer of thanksgiving. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. And God blesses us and sends us to love our neighbors and the world. Shining God's light in love and service. I love that. And I put it on Facebook and I got so many positive comments. So that's a wonderful, wonderful interesting. At this time, uh, Kim is going to have an announcement about an upcoming annual meeting. And, it's, and other announcements too. Whatever is on your heart. Uh, okay. Uh, first thing, Bible study is at 11 a.m. tomorrow. So hopefully people can come to that. Um, I have to make this official and announce our annual meeting on February 19th. But we made a little mistake in the letter that each of you will be receiving. It's supposedly January 19th. We forgot to change the month. That was my screw up. So that's all right. <laughs> so it's the 19th of February, right after service. And then we will have a potluck. So bring all the good food. Everybody can enjoy. And I will announce it again next Sunday. And then we'll be good on the Constitution and what we're to do. And tomorrow night is, well, tomorrow afternoon really, 4.30 is council. And we will be talking about upcoming Ash Wednesday and Easter season. Trying to get the plan done for that. So, and we are working on updating the church roster, which has been quite the ordeal. But I think we've got it. Carol and I are working on it, and we should have that done. So then we're going to proceed to do a new directory because our directory is pretty outdated and everybody will receive a new directory, hopefully soon. And let's see, what else we got out here? Uh, oh, well, as we know, uh, Rabbi Jim is gonna do service next Sunday and we're hoping that works for him and us, that we can continue his service in the next few months.
Let your light show shine. Let your light shine in love and service. Thanks be to God, and be sure to stay for the coffee hour.